Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to the book of Jeremiah. We are going to do the commentary on chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. So, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 30 and verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Well, that's how we got the book of Jeremiah. The Holy Spirit brought to mind everything that Jeremiah had spoken. And he wrote it in a book. Verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. Now, people love to say that Israel and Judah is the same thing. But why would the Lord say Ju Israel and Judah? Israel's capital was Samaria. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. They had different kings, different areas of land. They even fought wars against each other. So when you hear a preacher saying Israel and Jew is all Judah is all the same thing you should stay home and read your Bible instead of going to that ignorant probably a deceiver I mean somebody that's that ignorant is probably a deceiver I mean really you think about it and if you read in Jeremiah 3 8 chapter 3 verse 8 God divorced Israel, but he didn't divorce Judah. Why? Because of the promise that he had made to King David that there would always be a man of the line of King David to sit upon the throne. And per the reckoning of Christ with Joseph, he is of the line of Judah. Mary was a Levite, the priest tribe. Judah was the king tribe. So essentially you have a merging of the priests and the king. I mean, after all, Christ was redeemer, prophet, priest, and king. One day a coming king. All right, so back to verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, everybody thinks that what uh, the United Nations did in 1948 was the fulfillment of this prophecy. The United Nations is Antichrist, as are the great majority of the residents that live in the land over there. They deny that Jesus is the Christ, and per Bible definition, that is Antichrist. Don't believe me? How about 1 John 2, verse 22? Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. 
but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So, over there in the Middle East, do they accept Jesus as the Christ? No, they reject him as the Christ. 1 Corinthians 16.22, it says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. You know what anathema means? It means cursed. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cursed. So, what does that tell you about uh, those in the Middle East that deny that Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ? I mean, let's face it, if they accepted Jesus as the Christ, they'd be Christians, right? I mean, there you go. All right, Jeremiah 30, verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Huh. Um, just wondering, if you're thinking the black Hebrews are, you know, Israel... Well, they call themselves the black. They call themselves the black Hebrews, but if you think they're Israel, how can their faces turn into paleness? I uh, just yeah, I don't know. Something to think about there. Verse seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. What is this time of Jacob's trouble? Well, remember, Jacob was the grandson of Abraham, who God promised that he would bless his children, his seed, after him. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob and Israel is those words are used interchangeably. Jacob is Israel. And if you want to read about that, you can read about it in Genesis 32, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince... Hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed? So Israel basically means prince with God or rules with God, has reference to that. So, so what is this time about Jacob's trouble? Well, you could read a little bit about it in Daniel chapter 12. And in verse 1 it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, and we're talking about the archangel Michael, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, Every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The Lamb's Book of Life. See, there is a book of life. Oh, I love this. Psalms 27 and verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he, the Lord, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. 
And there is a lot of references in the Bible where Christ is called the rock. Did you know that the church was with Moses in the wilderness? The church was with Moses in the wilderness. I never heard that before, Chaplain Bob. Well, turn to the book of Corinthians. We're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Corinth was a city in Greece. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. There are 5,000 partial manuscripts of the New Testament in Greek. There is zero in Hebrew. Zero. So when people start telling you about Hebrew roots, say, what are you, fool, what you talking about? My Bible, my New Testament was written in Greek. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. What does it mean to be ignorant? It means you don't know something. It means you lack knowledge in a specific area. Doesn't mean you're stupid. No, doesn't mean that. When it comes to plumbing and brain surgery and rocket science, I'm ignorant. The Bible, not much, not so much, but you know. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. He's talking to a, a, a church here in Corinth, Greece. Okay? This is Paul, the so-called apostle to the Gentiles. Remember, there was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that led Moses and the children of Israel in the wilderness. If you've ever bothered to read the book of Exodus, which I have, that's why people are ignorant. They don't know anything about the Bible. They've never read it. Most church people have never read the Bible. Oh yeah, they go to church and they'll read five you know, five minutes worth of it with their pastor. But then after church, they go home, turn on the football game, and, you know, never read the Bible from cover to cover. Almost everybody tells me I'm wrong that I've met in person. I say, can you name 10 books in the Bible? They can't. They can't name 10. They might be able to name five or six, but most of them can't even name 10 books. And, and if you can't even name 10 books, I know you haven't read them. I know you haven't read them. It's, it's a shame. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. The Red Sea. The parting of the Red Sea with Moses, people. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, the manna from heaven, people, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Remember Moses struck the rock and water came out which is very handy when you're in a desert oh yeah so in psalms 27 verse 5 it says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a rock there you go there's the rock the rock was Christ. Now, the word tribulation basically means trouble. And in Matthew 24 and Mark 13, which are end time chapters, 
Matthew 24, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I mean, let's face it. God destroyed the earth in a flood. And this says there is going to be great tribulation such as not was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Oh boy. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah 30 and verse 7. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Verse 10, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel. See, Jacob and Israel is interchangeable. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed, or children, thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but... I will correct thee in measure. Oh yeah, you're going to get a spanking. You've been bad, I'm going to spank you. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Verse 14. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore, for I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, and out of them shall proceed 
thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them and they shall not be few I will also glorify them and they shall not be small see there's a time of punishment and then there's a time of restoration and the United Kingdom the European Union and the USSA that's the United Soviet States of America are about to enter into punishment mode because we have forgotten and turned our backs on the Lord that made us great so verse 20 their children also shall be as aforetime and their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all that oppress them and their nobles shall be of themselves and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them and I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me for who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me saith the Lord and ye shall be my people and I will be your God I love that verse Jeremiah 30 22 and ye shall be my people and I will be your God verse 23 behold the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury a continuing whirlwind it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked that's called judgment people well actually that's called wrath there's a big difference between judgment and wrath in legal terms getting a parking ticket and having to pay a fine that's judgment getting caught uh, you know public intoxication or theft and spending a night in jail that's judgment getting executed for murder for a murder conviction the death penalty now that's wrath behold the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury a continuing whirlwind it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked the fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days in the latter days ye shall consider it what are the latter days well you could say in the last days so all right this is the end of chapter 30 all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world all blessings praise glory and honor in jesus name amen